made your Word document and gotten it ready for conversion to EPUB, you actually wouldn't have to style it very much before it's ready for Kindle or even Smashwords or something else. It's basically just setting the H1 tag and then styling this first paragraph how you want it. After that, most ebook conversions are going to treat it the same. So I just used this one um, on my website, Publish Express, because it gave me this EPUB file on the Mobi file. I showed you a minute ago how you can open the Mobi file and preview it with Kindle Previewer. But you may not know how to preview the EPUB. There's some different programs you can use. There's Adobe Digital Editions, or you can use a lot of um, web-based ebook readers to open this file. But I always open it with Sigil, because if I wanted to convert it, if I made my Word document well enough, I wouldn't really have to convert it to Kindle like this, because if, if it just takes me one try and it looks good, it'll probably work just as well with Kindle's own Kindle Kindle conversion tool. So if you upload your Word document to them, they'll convert it to Mobi, and it'll be about the same. The problem is that you can't really check it on their platform and not nearly as quickly. So that's why I like to do it myself, just so I can make changes and save a new file, reconvert it, and then keep checking until I know it's right before I upload the Mobi file to Kindle. But sometimes you need to make more changes than that. You really need to get in and edit the text. Maybe you found a typo, and now you have to go through and fix it. That may be tough to do if you only have the Mobi file for Kindle. You also need the EPUB file because there are some tools that you can use to open and edit it. Um, the best one is Sigil, and I have it set so that if I just open this EPUB, it'll automatically open with my Sigil program. Sigil's free. You can just search for S-I-J-I-L and download it. Um, it's just a simple program that you can use to open ebook files, and it looks like this. Um, firstly, you'll see the cover is squished. That's just because the cover is set to respond to the screen width. So if this was a normal window for an ebook viewer, where it's more uh, less wide and taller, then this cover would be displaying just fine. It's only looking so weird because it's stretching all the way across this different window. But then if I look at the rest of my document, um, it actually looks pretty good. And interestingly, um, I showed you in the Kindle file that none of the fonts took over. So I used my online conversion tool um, and it stripped out all the fonts on the Mobi file. But opening up this EPUB file, it looks like it keeps these fonts. Actually, what I think is happening is um, these fonts are displayed on, they're installed on my computer, so I can still see these fonts. But if you were to download this EPUB document, I don't think the fonts are embedded yet. So you wouldn't be able to see this the same way. And so, for example, I just noticed in the Word document, there's no space here, and there should be. So I would have to go back. That was the original one. This is the Word document that I had made. So I'd have to go back to the Word document and fix this. Oh, there's a space there, so that's interesting. Somehow in the conversion process, it um, lost a space, which happens. So if I was only using the Mobi, Mobi file for Kindle, I couldn't open it and edit it like this. But because I have the EPUB, I can just add a space, hit the space bar, and then save it again, and it'll work. Um, there, there's a lot of buttons and things to look at. I'll show you a few things to notice. Basically what's done, it's taken all the different sections of my ebook, all the different chapters, and it's split them into different sections. And then it's linked all these different sections. These are all individual HTML files, so they're like mini web pages. It links them all together, and then it uses the same navigation that I was using in my Word document. And that's why these are not the same. It's just because I was testing out different chapter styles. But if I had made it all the same way in the Word document, it would have come through correctly in the navigation. That's why I like to do it in Word, um, because I can make sure everything's going to look fine. But it's here nevertheless. If I was to convert a Word file that I hadn't gone through and made H1 tags, then I'd have to go through this manually. 
I might even have to manually split it if I hadn't added um, the different sections. I went through and I made word section breaks between each chapter. Um, but if I hadn't done that, I'd have one in uh, main HTML file and I'd have to go through it all and split it. And I'd also have to go through to each chapter and if this wasn't set to H1 here, I'd have to highlight it and set it to H1 because if it's not set at H1, it's not gonna show up on my navigation over here. And so if I want to make sure I fix that, I'd have to go through and highlight every chapter header and hit H1. And then when I was done, I'd go to Tools, Table of Contents, and Generate Table of Contents. That would give me this navigation Panel. But because I already did all of that in Word, this is all just automatic. This is what it just shows up like. So I don't really need to do very much. Um, this document looks fine. But if I had a typo, I could just edit the text. And that's what I couldn't do with Moby. So if I found just a few things I wanted to fix, I could get in here really quickly, fix them, and then save it. I would save it as a new file just to make sure you don't override the original. So maybe I'd save it as and you want to do that every time you make changes just to make sure you don't you can't reverse what you've done uh, so I'm going to continue a little bit there's not much I would really recommend playing with you can also go to here is either the book view which is basically like this it's just seeing the text or you can go to the code view which is here and that's really going to show you all the HTML so if you need to fix something like spacing or it's adding some weird style and you can't seem to fix it in the text, it's just not working. Um, you could get into the code view, but you really shouldn't do that if you don't know HTML and what you're doing. You'd also want to check this check mark up here, which is validate, because you're going to want your EPUB to validate. And that just means that all the code is clean, so it'll work on Smashwords. Smashwords, for example, is picky. They'll take an EPUB, but it has to be really clean, so you'd have to check and I've hit this check mark and it says no problems found so I'm good but sometimes it'll have a lot of little code problems depending on who made your ebook or where you got it converted you might have problems that keeps it from validate, validating. Um, there's a lot more I could do in Sigil if I wanted to for example add pictures I could do that. I could also add links if I didn't add a link in Microsoft Word. The links that I made in Word should be here also. I didn't really finish the About the Author page, um, but here's a website. I hadn't linked this in Word, but you can do that. I'd go like this. I think I'd go to Insert Hyperlink, and then make sure I put the HTTP. As long as I did that, this link is active, and when I convert it to Mobi and EPUB with my online converter at Publish Express, that website will also be active. But if I hadn't done that in Word, I could highlight it and click link, and then just add the same thing. Oops, that's not it. HTTP website.com. and that's just gonna show up as a live link. So there's other things you, you may wanna add if you want to add like an opt-in box at the end. I would add a picture of the offer and then a link to like, click here and sign up to my list to get more free books. And that's something you could edit in the EPUB, but again, if you did that in Word, it'd be ready to go already. There's other things I could do if I wanted to embed certain fonts. Here I have a fonts folder but I don't think any of, there's no font here because none took from my conversion tool. The one I used strips out all the fonts. So I could use this to add fonts back in, um, but that's a little bit technical. I'd have to get into the style sheet also. The style sheet is what tells your book how to perform. So for example, on my chapters, I have this first paragraph that's not indented in the second paragraph that is indented and if I went to the code view I'd say the first paragraph is block 20 and the next paragraph is block 13 so if I wanted to change those styles I'd have to get into the style sheet 
and then go through and find that block 13 and the block 20. So this is 20, and it says text indent 0. That's why it's not indenting on that paragraph, but I could change this to fix that indent. There's actually way too many styles here. I've even, it's got some styles about fonts, but it doesn't have those fonts embedded. Um, if I embedded those fonts, then they would show up. And I usually will do that on some books. It's fine if you don't. Let me try to get back to, um, here it just looks kind of weird because it's bolded and H1. So it actually go through and fix all those. to unbold it, but also it's showing my font here because I have it installed on my computer still, but if I didn't embed it under here, you wouldn't be able to see it the same way. It wouldn't show up with this Bebas font. So that's something I could do in Sigil. I'll make another video that's more advanced Sigil, but really, unless you know what you're doing with EPUB formatting and HTML, you should just use Sigil to make small changes. So you just open it up, you go to the book view, and just fix little typos and you'll be fine. And then just save it as a new file. After you've saved this file, um, I think I saved this as, ebook formatting two. If I wanna convert it to Mobi, that's really simple. I'll just open my Kindle previewer again. And all I have to do is uh, take this file and drag it and drop it into Kindle Previewer, and it will start compiling an ebook automatically. So it's converting it to the EPUB format or to the Mobi format for me. And when that's done, it'll just put a new file in the same folder as the original file you used. And it goes in its own folder, so it's here. So this is a Mobi file that I just converted from EPUB with Kindle Previewer. And that's kind of the fastest way to do it. But if I had to make more changes, I'd have to go into Sigil again, open the EPUB, save it, and then convert it back to Mobi so that I could upload it to Kindle. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.